So up to this point, we haven't really talked about how a PDA actually computes formally. So one mechanism for me to describe this to you is using something called an instantaneous description. So if you're wondering what that means, it just means as, the, as it literally says, instantaneous description. It gives you a description of what the machine is doing at that time. <laughs> So we use, and I'm going to abbreviate instantaneous description or instantaneous descriptions as ID or IDs. We use instantaneous descriptions to describe to describe how we go from one configuration. One configuration, namely we're talking about the state and its contents of the stack. And we go from one configuration to another. An instantaneous description for push down automaton is a triple. Again, we're pulling up the three tuples here. It's going to have this form Q, W, lowercase gamma, where Q is going to be a state. So Q is a state. W is going to be the input left to process. So remember, we consume the symbol or process the symbols, right? So this is what's going to be remaining before we're done computing. And lowercase gamma is going to be the stack's contents. So you're going to assume that it, we're going to read it left to right to mean top to bottom. So left to right means top to bottom. So we're going to describe the machine based on these triples. And each one of these will tell us one configuration the machine can be in. So now I need to describe to you what it means to consume a symbol. I've been talking about this as hungry, hungry hippos thing. Like we need to actually have a, a formal notion for this. So let's talk about consuming a symbol. So suppose Suppose we have symbol A. And I must stress that this can be epsilon. To move from one instantaneous description to another, we're going to suppose, suppose we have our transition function, which says we have, we're in we're going to transition on state P on A, where we have X, and it, and it contains as one of its pairs Q alpha. Then what this will look like then for any W, so any string over that alphabet or input symbols, then for anyone over this and beta, which is going to be some string of stack symbols or stack alphabet, 
What it means is that I can write P A W. So A would be in front of the string that would be left after I consume A. Then I have X beta. So to describe a move, I use this tilted sideways T. And it goes from P to Q, because remember it says Q here. And it says it consumes A. And then it replaces the top of the stack with what? Alpha, right? So the top of the stack was X before, now it's alpha. So what we just described here is what we call a move of the PDA. This is what we call a move of a PDA. So this is how we could describe going from one configuration to another configuration. Naturally, if you have several of these pairs in a set, that means there's going to be potentially several configurations the PDA will be simultaneously. So one note I also need to make, as similar to some of the notation we've used in the past for derivations, for example, we might use this one. We'll use this to mean zero or more moves. Similar to our derivation process. So you might ask, OK, so how are you going to define this? Well, now I'm going to have to come up with an inductive definition for this. So actually, before I do that, let's actually consider what these, what an execution of a string would look like for a given PDA. I think that's a great idea. So rather than talking about this yet, we'll talk about this in a moment. Let's consider, let's consider what happens with a given input string for a given PDA. What actually happens for what all of these uh, possible configurations? It can be based on moves. So let's consider PPAL here. Now, PPAL here, this PDA, it'll recognize all even length palindromic binary strings. So we came up with this over here. It has three states. And the whole idea here is that we try to push, the, the, an accepting string would push W and then it will pop W in reverse based on the properties of a stack. So that's the goal here for acceptance. Now, of course, if it's welcome to, to stay in Q0 and consume more symbols and push more symbols, right? It can do that. That is possible based on the non-deterministic nature of a PDA. But most certainly, that won't lead, in our case, to an accepting state. And it won't, and, and, and the most important part of this is how we guarded off Q2, right? Notice that Q2 requires that the stack is presently just has a start symbol on it, but it has to consume the entire string to get over there, right? In the case it accepts. So this is allowing us to guard this off. If we we're consuming them all over here, then what happens is you would end up with a whole bunch of stuff on your stack, right? We're gonna see that in a moment. That means they'll still have to get popped, but we have no more symbols to consume. So there's almost like a, a weighing process with this PDA for how we get an accept on a palindromic string, namely an even length one. So I'm going to lay out what these, these triples would look like, where each one of these could be a move that takes you from one configuration to another. So I've labeled them based on the number of moves that occur. So these are all the possible configurations based on a number of moves. Namely, this is the starting configuration if your input string is... So if I, suppose I give you the string with four zeros, so it's four zeros, this is indeed an even like palindrome, right? You would agree that the first two zeros are the same order as if the reversal of them for the last two, right? So this is indeed an even length palindrome. So I want you to look carefully at how this plays out. So you'll notice that there's many ways that the PDA can proceed based on what we have over there. So look at Q0. So just to reemphasize the main point here, there is a path of execution for the PDA, namely a sequence 
of configurations described by instantaneous descriptions that take me from the starting configuration, namely, notice that this is the string w, this is the start symbol, that's what presently is on the stack, right? And it starts in q0, right? There is some path of execution described by what we had over there, by moves using instantaneous descriptions, these IDs. Do you see it? Now, you can see right down here, if you follow the arrows to the right spot, you'll see it. And it'll match the intuition you're expecting. So notice it's right down here. We want it to be where it consumes the entire string and it's in Q2. That's all we really care about, right? It's in a final state. Well, let's see how we can get there. Well, we already know you have to consume the first half before you start popping, right? That's the intuition behind that PDA over there. So you'll notice that if we follow this way, right? We go, da -da 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 -do. we consume the first two zeros. And then we want to pop those, pop the X's that are presently on the stack with the two zeros by consuming them. So we transition over to Q1 on the epsilon move over there. Then we pop. We do it's pop in time by consuming a zero. Then we consume another zero to pop off the last X. And that brings us down over here. So this, for example, is a sequence of configurations, a sequence of moves of the PDA, namely described by their IDs. So the configurations are the IDs, just to be very clear. The moves are how we go from one to the other. And notice that it's actually a sequence of instantaneous descriptions that tell me what's happening with the machine at each stage. Is that clear, everyone? So, for example, you know how I talked about how it is possible with this PDA to stay in Q0, gobble up all of the input, and then try to get over to Q2, but you can't because because <laughs> you have you, you, you have a whole bunch of stuff on your stack. You don't have Z0 on the stack. It's actually this scenario right here. So notice it, it consumes 0, pushes it on the stack, right? Pushes an X on the stack. Consumes, push, consume, push. No more, but it has four Xs. But notice it cannot, it can freely move over to Q1 based on the way we have this set up, but it cannot go to Q2, right? It can't go to Q2. Why? Because the top of the stack isn't Z0, right? It's X. <laughs> so that's just how we're gating off Q2. So please note, this is just like what we talked about with Don determinism in the past. You can imagine these as threads that we're generating based on the possible moves that can occur. Remember, it's a set of pairs. So each set of pairs dictates a new possible path of execution. So non-deterministically, you can imagine it like it going along the red pathway, or you can imagine it like it's exhausting all of these. And then it happens to get to this one. So what does it mean to reject then? Do you have any ideas of what rejecting the string would look like then? Well, think of it. Think, it's like a path, one of these paths can never lead to a configuration for which it accepts, right? Where it consumes the input and it's in a final state, right? So it means that all of them have to be enumerated. There's, notice there's an asymmetry here. That's typical in, a, uh, in non determinism. So now let's talk about how we can describe a sequence of moves using our notation over here. Actually, let me keep this over here. Actually, now let's, let's head over here. I'm going to define it, and then I'll do an example showing you how I get one of these over here using this notation. It's very helpful when you're talking about formally how the PDA gets processed for a given input string. So I'm going to get rid of this too, because we got the idea about how, how this works. I need to define for you how, how that notation works. Because it's important, because otherwise we are going to have a hard time saying what it means to accept. 
So we're going to define that notation I described for zero or more moves inductively. So we're going to define, define a move of zero or more moves inductively as follow, as follows. So the basis for this definition, so naturally when I describe it inductively, you know right away that if you wanted to prove something about your PDA using this concept of instantaneous description, you know right away this is going to be your best friend, right? It's, in, it's described inductively. So namely if I give you an ID i, of course it represents zero or more moves, so it means that Indeed, it can, it's indeed I still, it can be. And this is true for every I instantaneous description I. So this is committing zero moves, right? So this is zero moves. So you can stay in your own configuration by a, as described as instantaneous description. So to go from an ID i to an ID j by a sum number of moves, it means that this can happen if there exists some ID, some instantaneous description k, so that you can move from i 2k and k through zero or more moves gets you back, gets you over to j. Now, you might say, Dan, that's not really satisfactory. Now, you just kind of just told me, yeah, it's just kind of like you can make one move over to k and then you can take zero or more moves from k to j. Well, let me describe it now a little bit more carefully. So, more carefully. I moves from I to J. That's often how you might say this. It moves from I to J if there is a sequence, if there is a sequence I1, I2, all the way up to IN, so that So that i is equal to i1 and in is equal to j and for each and for each i is equal to 1 2 all the way up to n minus 1 it has to be that i can move from instantaneous description i i i i captain <laughs> <laughs> I can go from I I to I I plus one. So I want to do an example with you, just showing you how you can use this notation. So I'll do. I'll. I'll, I'll let me. Let me get. To, let's consider another example. I'm going to use PayPal. So. If you need to look at PPAL again, I recommend taking a look at it your, on your notes. So suppose that the input string is 1001. Then the initial configuration PPAL would be is in Q0. It has 1001 zero, right? This is the initial configuration. This is the initial ID, right? This is the input. I haven't consumed anything yet. This is what the stack looks like that starts in Q0. Now, of course, I can make a move by gobbling up one and then pushing a Y, right, in Q0. So I can go, I gobble up the one, yummy, yummy stuff. I get a Y pushed onto the stack, right? I can, of course, continue this process. I can do another move. Let's gobble up a, uh, a zero. So we gobble up this symbol. 
Because remember, you have to read it left to right. Then you get an X on the top of the stack because it was a zero this time. Is nummy stuff. Nummy num. Now, after that, I could, for example, I could, for example, just freely move over to Q1 on the epsilon move. Because remember, X is the top of the stack, so I can freely move to Q1. Then I'm going to now consume the zero. Consuming the zero is the same as to do that means I'm going to pop off an X, right? That's a valid move. Hence, there is going to exist an instantaneous description that describes such a move, okay? Q1, one, now I'm gonna pop on X. And then lastly, we're not quite done yet, but I'm gonna consume, we're gonna consume the one, we're gonna pop, why? And then lastly, we're just going to move on, move on over to Q2. So based on this information, did we accept or is, is, is this PDA going to accept the string? So notice that this is just one of the pathways over there, but keep in mind that's for a different input string. If you were to give me W, like this, it would have its own version of what we have over there. And this time it will. You'll know right away because you'll notice this is an even length palindrome, right? That's how we designed the PDA. <laughs> this is, this, so naturally it gets over to Q2. <laughs> so, so this is actually a description of one of those pathways, except when W is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1, as opposed to 0, 0, 0, 0. <laughs> I mean, four zeros, yeah. So keep in mind, this is just describing one path of execution. You could do the same thing with what we had over there, except you would consider that particular W. Is that clear, everybody? But yeah, so this is just an example of me using this notation. So this notation is for me to describe all the moves. You might ask, Dan, how can this notation be useful for describing the processing of a string with a PDA? Well, I want us to revisit PPAL, and now I want to show you how I can know what a string that gets accepted by this PDA looks like using this notation for moving from one ID to, to another. So let's look at this now. So now I want to show you how this notation is rather versatile. This is something that you might do in a proof, for example. Notice with PPAL, and I'm talking about like the PDA PPAL. I'm not, don't read that quite literally, okay? <laughs> so PPAL, if we are given, we are given a string of the form of the form WW reverse, well, what happens? It's going to push, well, as we said, it pushes a whole bunch of X's first and Y's, of course, corresponding to W. Pushes X's and Y's corresponding to W. And we'll call that y, just like lowercase y. Uh, we can see, we can see that, see, ww reverse gets accepted by ppal. Here, I'll show you how this notation is rather helpful for us to describe this process. So check this out. So imagine the input is ww reverse z0. 
Well, as we just said, through zero or more moves, it will get me from Q0 to this instantaneous description, which is going to be W reverse, so it's going to consume W. But what is that? That's Y reverse. Because remember, the stack will put them up. Remember, remember the whole thing with the stack is that it's going to put them like this, right? But what does it do? It reverses it. So when it pops, doing its popping time, it's going to get them all in reverse, right? So this is what the stack will look like after I push all of those X's and Y's for W, right? Then it transitions on one move over to Q1, right? It's not in Q0 anymore. Then I have WR, then I have YR, or Y reverse, Z0. Then after this, because there's always going to be a matching, a matching Y for a 1 and an X for a 0, it will be the case that for this string, or any string of this form, that after zero or more moves, it'll be Q1, then it will consume W reverse, and it'll pop Y reverse. And you end up with that, and then lastly on a single move, you go from Q1 to Q2, where you have nothing else to read, right? The whole string is in the whole string has been read. But we're in Q2. So notice that this describes the what I had in red over there for one example. This is actually a general way of writing the same thing that I kind of visualized over there in red. Isn't that neat? So this is a way I could describe what's happening with the machine for one possible path of execution. And remember, the execution itself, just because, it, remember, it's non-deterministic, it'll take the form of what? A, a tree-like form, right? So one possible pathway, as long as it consumes the entire string, gets me to the final state. That's the ID for such a situation. Now, now that we have the instantaneous descriptions. Now I could describe to you what the language of a PDA is. And it depends on how we accept in a PDA. So we're going to consider acceptance by final state. I must stress that there exists other ways you can make a PDA accept, such as acceptance by an empty stack. We won't consider that here, but if you understand the main idea here, it's fairly easy to see how you could translate definitions we're talking about here into that context. So we're going to be considering our conventional notion of acceptance. So. So, cons so I'm going to use consider twice. This is such a tab, such a ooh for me to do. Um, it's because I skipped a whole bunch of fun things in our notes that have all sorts of details in them. So consider any PDA P, so any push down automaton P, the language accepted by P. P sigma gamma delta Q0, Z0, F. By final state, by final state, is, by final state, I'll give it a name, denoted L of P is the following. So L of P, the language of PDAP, is as follows. So it's any string W 
such that if you start from the initial configuration described by this ID, this one, after zero or more moves, you can get to this ID, QF, Epsilon, Alpha, where QF is, of course, among the final states, and Alpha is any, any stack string. So what you might be asking is what, what, what else has to be the case? Remember, like we've reiterated a few times, it has to consume the input and has to be in a final state. And that's is what you characterize as the language of a PDA P when it accepts via final state. So just to emphasize the rules here for acceptance and rejection based on what we've discussed here. So let's summarize this. So P accepts if all of W is consumed and P's current state is a final state. Otherwise, P rejects W. And that should be unsurprising to you, is that, is that there has to be the case that, that one of the states that the PDA is in has to have it where it's, it's described in this fashion for its instantaneous description. So, it's in a final state, it's consumed the input, and we don't really care what's going on with the stack. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so if there exists a way to go from the initial ID to any ID that looks like this, it accepts. If it fails to do this, then it rejects. So again, note the asymmetry here. <laughs>